So you're at the dealership, you just negotiated the deal for your vehicle, and then he turns to you and says, how are you going to finance this thing? I'm Devin from Visions with this episode of Cash Clips and we're talking first auto loans. So first things first, you gotta decide, are you buying a new vehicle or a used vehicle? But it's not so simple as the age on the sticker. You see, it matters how your loan is structured because a new auto loan is actually different from a used auto loan in terms of payments, your rates, your term. Let's break it down. Let's talk rates and terms. Now, when it comes to your rate, you're looking for the APR. That's the annual percentage rate, which simpler way of putting it, it's your interest rate. Now, that can vary based on a lot of things. It could be your credit, could be the age of the vehicle that you're buying. And then there's your terms. Now, this can also change a little bit. Generally speaking, when we're talking loans, your term means how long you're taking that loan out for. And how long you can take that loan out for is based on, well, your credit and whether you're buying a new or a used vehicle. You see, the difference between a new and a used auto loan, it's bigger than what you have inside the console of the car itself. It determines what kind of loan you have and what kind of rates and terms you can expect. So let's take a new auto loan. Comes off the lot, pretty much blemish free. You know that everything's gonna be working just the way the manufacturer intended. And because of that, you're more likely to get more favorable terms with your financial institution. After all, they're not very well expecting the car to break down or for you to sell it right away. So you'll probably get lower interest rates and a longer term if that's your thing. Now, compare that to a used auto. A used auto loan typically comes with shorter terms and a higher interest rate. That's because as that car continues to depreciate in value and as more problems may arise, your lender wants to make sure that they're covered in case of a breakdown or in case you sell it. Let's talk money. What's it gonna cost me? So you're at the dealership, he shows you the bill, you look down, you see your payment and you think, well, that's pretty affordable, I can swing that, that's fine. Then you look a little bit further and you see 84 months. Well, that's seven years. Think about that fact. You might be able to get a really low payment with a longer term, but the cost of that over time could really shock you. It could be the difference of hundreds of dollars or thousands of dollars. And more importantly, the longer that you carry that loan, the less your car is gonna be worth. So come seven years down the road, pun intended, you might be trying to sell that vehicle and it might only be worth a couple grand. So for most people, their first car loan is their first loan, period. And that means that they probably don't have a credit score established, which means you might be looking for a co-borrower. Now, a co-borrower is someone that you can trust, and just as importantly, someone that trusts you. Because what matters with a co-borrower is that the institution looks at their credit just the same as yours, and if they have really great credit and you have limited to no credit, they might base that decision, that loan approval, based on their credit. So you guys both get on the hook for those payments. So find someone you trust, like a friend, a parent, a spouse, a partner, someone that you know that you're gonna rely on in case you get into a financial jam or the other way around. So we've talked big stuff, let's talk little stuff. And the biggest of the little stuff is your insurance. Now, if you're driving a car, you need insurance. But if you're gonna have an auto loan, you need even better insurance. That's full comp, full collision, the whole shebang. Now that can be expensive, so reach out to your financial institution. It's possible that they partner with a local insurance agency to give you a discounted rate. Same thing, look at bundling with your existing insurance partner. Maybe you can save money by combining your homeowner's insurance and your auto insurance. Next, have you ever heard the term being underwater on your loan? That's when you owe more on your loan than your vehicle is worth. And that's where guaranteed asset protection or GAP can be really valuable. See, if your vehicle is ever totaled or stolen, Gap coverage can pay the difference between what you owe on your vehicle and what the vehicle is worth. And then there's your warranty option. Now, let's say that you got your new car, you're 100 miles down the road, suddenly your transmission gives out. Well, that's something that could be covered by a warranty. Same thing, if you lose your car's key fob, those things can cost hundreds of dollars. Having that warranty coverage in place can take care of those little things outside of your control. And best of all, things like GAP and your warranty protection, those can typically be financed right into the cost of your auto loan, so it's just part of your monthly payment. You don't need to worry about having that money up front. And then when it comes to your lender, don't forget about the cost of convenience. So for me, that's easy access online or through my mobile app. So if I wanna make an extra $50 payment per month on my loan, I can do that. If I have an issue with my auto loan, I can call someone across town rather than someone across the world. 
So next time that you're shopping around for a loan, think about local, think about convenient access, because these are the things that's gonna make your loan experience easier in the long run. So I'm Devin from Visions with another episode of Cash Clips, and I hope that you learned something today about financing your first ride. Check out the rest of our YouTube channel. We have everything from loans to savings to mortgages, everything in between, a lot of good content. Give us a like, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on Cash Clips.